Well, Chuck Delsman, Wisconsin sports fans, particularly in the southeastern part of the state, are aware that he is a marvelous sports writer. What a passion he had. He's had a fantastic career. But something was missing, and I think Chuck is the man who can tell the story. We are so delighted to have Chuck Delsman with us on My Faith with Homer and Pip. I'm Tommy Pippins. Our producer is Brent Young, and the man who, with the Holy Spirit, was inspired to start this video podcast is Steve the Homer True. We know that the good Lord is going to work in all those listening as we all make that journey together to and through the cross. Homer, without further ado, you're up, buddy. Always curious to my faith, but I've turned over time to be also most curious about where everybody decides to start, at what age, at what time. So, Chuck, it's all yours, and okay. you, you decide where, when, and how you want to start the story. Perfect. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you a background now. Uh... I've been at St. Charles Church forever, born in Heartland in 1949. In fact, I'm one of about 11 guys, Homer. We're building a brand new church in, in uh, Heartland, St. Charles. And I think I'm one of 11 or 12 people because I'm an old 73-year-old man that have gone to all four churches once the new church we get going next year. But I was one of those guys that forever thought I was a good Catholic and a good Christian because I would go to Mass every Saturday at 5. I would put my $20 in the collection plate and thought I was really doing myself a service and the Lord a service by being there. But here's my story. I didn't have a clue what the homily was about, what the readings were about, because I was thinking when I was sitting back in my pew in the last row on the right side, I was thinking about baseball or my golf game or what I was going to do at work the next day and was taking in none of the messages at all. It was just, I was, a, when I, when I'd go back home, I, I had no clue what the homily or the messages were about. But that all changed, Homer, when we got a new preacher called Father Ken Omernick, came to St. Charles about 10 years ago. I went to his first Mass on Saturday at 5, like I always did, and he was preaching for the first time. And that day his message was, listen to the scriptures, listen to the homilies, listen to the readings, take that to heart, and go out to the world and proclaim, proclaim those messages. And that hit me right in the heart, Homer and, and Pip. It, uh, I, I didn't realize all those years, I really, I was just going to church physically. I wasn't attending at all mentally, even though I thought I was. I thought I was being a good Christian and a good Catholic. And he got me believing in that. And to this day, I go five or six times a week at Mass. And I understand, I, I know that homily, I know those readings, and I take that to heart and put that out in the real world. So that's kind of my story, and here I am. I'm proud to be a strong Catholic and a strong Christian, and I actually know what's going on when I go to Mass now. What touched you? What of the verses or what was different that day that made you say it's changed i think i think it was a combination the new preacher interested me when father ken came he he interested me i heard about his work at, at saint gregory the great and how how much of an effective preacher he was he only preached for five to seven minutes, but he hit you right in the heart with the message. He didn't fool around. He got you right in the heart. And I think he, being interested in the new preacher, when I heard his voice that day, great, great voice, it, I, I said, I think I just got a wake-up call here. I haven't been going, I've been going to church, but I haven't been participating. And that, I think, turned my whole thing around. I think his presence, his voice, and his message. So did you pray more? Did you realize that God was something you didn't know God was? something changed or something of all the different things that are out there had to draw you not just well, he, in in that message he, he he talked about prayer and again i was one of those people i prayed at church homer and, and pip but i i never prayed at home i never thought about god and jesus when i was home or playing golf or waking up in the morning or mowing my lawn or watching tv or reading the paper he got me to say, it's, it's, it's good to pray. You can pray every day at home. You can pray for a minute. You can pray for five minutes. You can pray for 15 minutes. Sometimes you can come and sit in the church. You don't have to pray at all. Just sit there and, and take in, take in the, the cross and everything else. And the praying thing, I, I pray now four or five times a day, and I feel so much better about it. And that's what he got me doing. What about God? What about Jesus do you know now or believe or think about that you didn't before? I, I, I knew he certainly gave up his life for us on the cross, but I didn't realize the importance of it and the whole story about it. 
I knew the story, but it, I, I, now I take it to heart and, and know things like that, that he was resurrected, all for, all for the good and honor of us, what he's doing for us each and every day. If you have only a minute to tell someone else why it is so important to you and why it could be so important and so special to them, what would you say in that 60 seconds? I think that's a great question. I think alone the power of prayer. You can pray in church with the assembly there at Saturday at 5 o'clock with the preacher, or you can go home when you're home by yourself. You can sit down, sit on the couch, kneel down, and make your message. Pray to God. Send out messages. Ask him for, for your forgiveness for, for sins or when we haven't behaved as good as we should have. And uh, the power of prayer and his ability to listen. He listens to all of us each and every day. And he puts up with tons of our mistakes and his patience with us is just incredible. And that's, that's the number one thing I take right now. I know he's with me 24 seven. How do you feel like he responds to your prayers? Some believe people believe they're answered, some not answered so much. It's, I, you know, that, that, that's another great question. Uh, I think one of my, I just, I've had many surgeries over the years, back surgery and all kinds of crazy. I died of a heart attack 15 years ago and he resuscitated me at the hospital and got me back. And uh, I think the power of prayer, a little great example is, and I, I kind of believe it, and some people wouldn't believe of that power, even though they're Christians or Catholics. My youngest daughter is uh, pregnant for the second time. She was battling morning sickness like she did throughout her whole nine months with her first child about four years ago. And the same thing started over and over again. And I said, Katie, I'm going to pray for you each and every day at Mass. Something good's going to happen. Well, her sickness, and she just felt lousy for another month. All of a sudden, she woke up one day, and this is a true story, whether you can believe it or not. And she's feeling wonderful now. She looks great. She's about five months pregnant. No problems, no sickness. And I said to her the other day, in fact, I'm going up to Lake Arrow. She lives in the Pines Course, Homer, and I know you play a lot of golf. Right on the first hole at the Pines Course. And I said to her, you're feeling wonderful. I think that power of prayer. And unfortunately, they're not church goers. They believe in God and everything. They, I, I'm trying to roll them over. And I think she's starting to come around too because all of a sudden she feels good. And I said, I think it's that prayer that, that got you turned around a little bit. So, so believe, in, believe in the Lord and believe in yourself. Have you noticed, do you think people would say that you are different? That they see that you are different or maybe not? since this became just a bigger part of your life? I think there's no doubt about it. My golfing buddies, you play a lot of golf. Over the years, before I got rolling with, with the Lord, we would the language sometimes wasn't as good as it should have been, whether it was from me or my playing friends. And uh, they've noticed because I kind of don't tolerate that kind of talk anymore. And I haven't sworn in about 10 years. So uh, a lot of people in the street say, Chuck, you seem so happy with life. And I know you're very involved at St. Charles. I said, well, the Lord's part of my life. No, it never was. Be it was a minimal part before. And that was my fault. It wasn't his fault. He tried to get me on his team and I wouldn't sign. But now I'm signed up for a lifetime contract and I'm really enjoying it. And a lot of people are noticing that change. Do you ever think about your life before this relationship and anything that would have been different or anything you wish you could go back on and you know it would be different because you're not the same person as you were then. I, I do, and again, the language thing, I, I, wasn't a, I wasn't a person that swore a lot or something, but when, when, the, when I hit one into the woods or something, you know what would happen, something bad might come out of your mouth, and uh, it, it, I, I just think it's the overall picture. Understanding the Lord, his messages, listen to his homilies, listen to his messages, listen to his gospels, all that stuff has come to one big package for me and it's really turned my life around. I'm so happy with life right now. And it's, uh, I feel so, I feel so blessed to go to church every morning and, and pray with them and, and pray with my friends at church. And uh, it just turned my life around. I, I'm really, really a positive man right now. Tommy, it's all yours. Take it away. Well, great job, Homer and Chuck, for sure. And thanks a lot, Homer and, and Pip, for doing this show. It's a wonderful show, and we got to get the word out because I think I like your guys' shirts, too. And uh, I unfortunately got my Brewer shirt on today. Otherwise, I would have I got one of those shirts from you guys. So We'll work something out. I know you know Homer. I always commit him, and then he does all the, the hard work. Uh, Chuck Delsman is our guest on My Faith with Homer and Pip. 
Again, the Holy Spirit directing Homer, and this has been so marvelous, and we are so grateful for Chuck and our producer, Brent Young. And, you know, Chuck, I, you always have been a positive, nice person, but as I've listened to you recently when we have talked, and now to watch you with Homer, there, there's joy. There's a joy that maybe was missing before. Do you sense it in yourself? You've fallen in love with Jesus Christ and the Lord. I have, and it's, it's so special to me. Again, with my story, I, I went to church every Saturday, but I really wasn't there mentally, and now I'm, I'm all in. I'm 100% all in mentally, and I, I, feel, I feel so gifted and uh, lucky to be close to the Lord and understand him and knowing he's with me all the time. And it's, he's helped me through all, I believe he's helped me get through uh, some back surgeries and some heart issues. And I believe in the power of prayer and I believe he's there for me and for everybody else. If, if you let him in. As you look back, as you said, you could have gone, been gone with the whole issue with your heart. And doesn't it amaze you that, that God said, I've got more for Chuck to do. I'm going to keep him going and he's going to step right in and he's going to be with me heart and soul. It's funny you say that, Pip, because that's when I, I, I actually drove myself to Oconomowoc Hospital and uh, died right on the hospital floor. I said, I'm having a bad heart attack and actually expired right there. And they revived me and had some heart surgery. My brother actually told me that two days later, he said, Chuck, the Lord had, Lord had more work for you to do on, on earth down here. And that's why you're here tonight, because he, he, he said he wants you on his team and he wants you to do some more work for him. So I really believe in that. In conjunction with that, I heard something from a priest recently who was at Sloan Kettering Hospital, and they said they did some sort of a study, and they prayed for half the people, and half the people were not prayed for, and the ones who were prayed for, and they didn't know it, they were getting healthier at a more rapid uh, way, and uh, it, it's, it's, as you say, the power of prayer, and yet there may be times when Jesus says, wait or maybe there's a no, how are, you, how are you with that? If it doesn't all go our way, as you're well aware, we have to suffer, Jesus suffered, we all go through it. How, how does that look from your spiritual lens? I realize he can't help everybody 100% of the time and if he can help all of us 10% of the time or 5% of the time, whatever he can give us, because he's there to give us stuff every day, even though we don't, maybe, maybe we don't, accept him as good as we should, or listen to him as good as we should. He's always there to help us every day. He never turns his back on us. And I'm never turning my back again on him. We're in the past, maybe down the road. And I said, you know, people, people pray, they pray foolishly. They say, I pray I can win the lottery. And those things are all fictitious stuff. You know, the power of Jesus and praying to be a better person, to be a better Christian, to be a better husband or a man or, or a worker, a friend. That's where the power of prayer really is involved. Not, not in, I want to be a, I want to pray that I'm the best baseball pitcher on earth someday. That, that mm. stuff's fine. But uh, I think the, the, uh, the prayer thing is try to make us a better person and pray to be better and be part of his team. Yeah, nothing on earth, this earth lasts. That's so well said, Chuck. When you pray, of course, we Christians, Catholics believe in the, in the Trinity, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Do you, do you take into account the Holy Spirit? What does prayer look like, if you don't mind sharing that for you? Prayer to me is something that uh, I, I can do with my, with my preacher. I can pray with him and listen to him. I can pray by myself and have my own messages. I think you can pray in total silence. Uh, Father Nick, who just left us at uh, St. Charles, once told me, says, Chuck, it's fine. You, you can come to church be total silence and you're praying with the lord and he's with you and you're with him and it's it's a special time and you are very involved in the church aren't you you're always helping out at mass and how much i'm how usher much? i'm usher and i i think i'm the oldest server they used to call them altar boys <laughs> years ago i think i'm the oldest server around i said to father ken one day you're 74 i'm 73 and here we are you're the preacher and i'm the server here hopefully hopefully we don't fall down and here trip on our robes or something you know and how much satisfaction do you get in knowing that you're you're there representing and serving not only the people in the assembly but the lord himself i feel so special when i'm serving with him whether i'm setting the altar or doing whatever 
presenting the gifts to them, uh, just being part of the service up at the altar and in front of the church, it really makes me feel special, better than better than being in my back row on the right side there, where, I, where I'm, a, where I'm a, a good person and a good uh, Christian, but I really feel special when I can serve, and it uh, makes me feel special with the white robe on and everything else, so. Do you find now that that you are convinced, you know, that you're you're saved, of course, in baptism, but now you're just you're you're totally committed to the Lord. Do you find yourself having a, a, a zeal for souls? I have a friend who says the goal is to get to heaven and bring as many people along with me as possible. Is that that's somewhere in your thinking when you're around people? I think that's perfectly said. And Again, I, 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 like I told Homer, I, I'm playing with golf and I got a group of guys, about 16 or 20 guys. And I kind of think I've turned their, their fortunes around with their, with their bad talk and their profane language at times. And it's not a horrible, horrible thing or a constant all the time, but they've cleaned up their acts a lot. And I feel like I'm kind of the sheep herder there and I'm leading these guys into a little better situation. And a couple guys have said, Chuck, thanks a lot for doing that for us. So it's a much better game right now. It's a lot more fun. It's really neat. You have Chuck Delsman, a ministry. I'm going to ask one more and then bounce it back to Homer if he wants. And, and that would be what message do you have for someone out there who maybe was in your position where the Lord was on the periphery or maybe will happen upon this podcast, my faith with Homer and Pip and say, man, I don't know. Uh, you know, I tried, it didn't work. I, you know, God's out there. He's distant. He's not personal. Look at everything that's going on in the world. Oh, sure. Uh, and the churches have had, let's be honest, the churches have had some problems over the, over, over the years caused by themselves or, or the situation. Okay. I think, I think what you, I tell those people, don't ever give up on the Lord. Maybe you, maybe you've had a bad experience or not the experience you have hoped for. He's always there with you. He never turns his back. You might turn, we might turn our backs on him. But he never, ever turns his back on you. So don't give up. Be positive and give it another try. And if, if you really try hard, it'll work. Is it accurate to say, Chuck, because it's our sense that you have surrendered to the Lord Jesus and you trust in him and you have peace no matter what might happen going forward in this life? A hundred percent. Uh my, my, my faith and everything else is, is with him and whichever road he takes to have me go down, I'm totally satisfied with that. And uh, it's, a, it's been a wonderful experience for me. It's been the best experience of my life and having kids and grandkids and bowling 300 games and 800 series and holes in one, but nothing, nothing like, nothing like what he's done for my life and my, my attitude and my ability to try to proclaim some of the word, Lord's word uh, out there on the street. Nothing we desire compares with him. Homer? Uh, not to be negative, but you clearly have this fantastic relationship. But when, when you look at it, do you feel like you were in your life furthest from God? I got married when I was 33, and probably from the time I was 18 to 30, maybe. I just, I, I, I. I I, I could make excuses not to go to church. You know, I could make excuses not to go at five o'clock. Uh, I want to wash my car or something. I got to go to the driving range and sharpen up my game a little. And, and now it's, uh, it, it, I think I, I just changed it. That's when I kind of, was that my worst, I think. Uh, my language wasn't as good as it should be. I didn't do evil things or I, I didn't steal stuff. I didn't do that stuff, but I just wasn't. I was, I thought, I thought he, I thought maybe the church owed me a good living and everything else. And I didn't quite figure that out till I got involved. And now I know what's going on. Given that it was still kind of a part of you, it was still around you. Why do you think that was, was that the way you were raised or somehow while it wasn't what you feel it should have been, it was still there. Why was it still there in whatever smaller part it was? Well, I think maybe as a young person, my parents got divorced when I was three years old, and my grandma, Elsie Elsie uh, Delsman, she uh, she was a little short lady, but she was a very very staunch Catholic, and she uh, she would make sure she would drive me to church when I was four years old or something, and I was living with my mom, and she would I think that's why it got started. There was a good base there. My grandma Elsie gave me a, a good foundation and she would drag me to church and if I would fall asleep or start goofing around she'd grab my hand and yank my hand and say Chucky don't do that listen to the church listen to the preacher and I think that's where it was always there but 
as I got a little older and came on my own, it, it slipped away a little bit. And even though I was still at, I was still going to church, but uh, I like going to church now because I know something good's going to happen. I'm certain of this. There are certain messages you've heard at church, a homily. What are there any that stand out that 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 touch you? or have touched you the most that you remember. Now, clearly you mentioned the one that you spoke of that changed everything, but other messages that are just special to you for whatever reason. I think when maybe it, it, so many, when Jesus was out, when, when he, some of the disciples were out in the boat fishing and their nets were completely empty and he showed up and all of a sudden we had a lot of fish and everything got going and he fed everybody with, uh, they had hardly anything to eat. And all of a sudden they had plenty of bread and plenty of fish. And that showed his power right there and what he could do for each and every one of us. What do you ask God for in your prayers? I ask him for the safety and well-being of my three kids and their kids. I ask him to make me the best person that I can do each and every day. I ask him for guidance to make decisions about my family or about my finances or whatever. And most important, I ask him to guide me through life's journeys and guide me down the straight path. And if he can do that, I'm, I'm all in and I know he can do that. You may have made reference to it, but when were the times when you even said in your prayer, I can't believe what you did. I mean, I know you're God, but even this is just incredible by my standards. Yeah, I mean, I listen to some of those homilies and I go, wow, I, I, to, you know, to turn water into wine is, is pretty, pretty impossible, you know, and, uh, but he has that power to do it. And, and that was incredible, you know. Tommy, the smile I Changed. I don't know what the T-shirt's going to be, but I'll I'll listen. I'll come. I'll, I'll come. Well, he can't have our T-shirt. Not that he couldn't. But there's a there's a power. There's a smile. There's a uh, something there that uh, that has to be the Chuck T-shirt. Yeah, and I don't know if it's your favorite uh, Saint Mother Teresa with a shirt you shared with us about prayer. I don't know. That might come into play. But Chuck, uh, again, just uh, such joy in you and and and. Does it boggle the mind sometimes that to Homer's point about answering prayer and how he had a plan for you from day one, you had that praying grandmother, God was in on that, you know that Timothy had, right, in the Bible. But does it blow your mind to know that we are nothing but a speck in the ocean, and yet the God who created the universe loved us into existence and he knows every hair on our heads though we're getting less and less <laughs> at least I, I, I mean like you say we're just a speck we're a little dot we're we're nothing but yet at the same time he treats us as if we're a gigantic boulder everybody's yeah. a big boulder in his life of all equal value whether you're wealthy or poor lame or, or physically fit you're all the same with him. We all rank. We all rank number one. We're all one and one a at the racetrack. You know, if the, if the same horses are one and one a, and that's what I think the good thing about the Lord is he treats all of us the same, whether you're a billionaire or whether you're stuck in poverty. So that that's special to me. Chuck Delsman, you said you had a good story to tell and by golly, you did. And you gave honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And man, we do thank you for that. It's really nice to connect again. Well, good. Thanks a lot for having me. Keep up the good work. I'm going to spread the news on the show, too. So we'll talk this week, and now I can get people more people interested to watch. We're thankful because Homer and the Holy Spirit, again, they were a dynamic duo in getting us together, and our fabulous producer, Brent Young. And if it's okay with you, may I call you Chucky on occasion, like uh, your beautiful grandma? You can. I knew I was in trouble when grandma called me Chucky. I went, I said, <laughs> oh, grandma, don't do that in front of my friends. You know, don't call me Chucky. Call me Charlie or Chuck or something. Don't. She says, I'll do whatever I wanted to, because she was about four foot eight, and she, she called the shots, but she was very special to the Lord, and the Lord was very good to her, so. Well, for Chucky, a.k.a. Chuck Delsman, Steve the Homer True, and producer Brent Young, I'm Tommy Pippins. Take care, everybody. We are so thankful that you have tuned into My Faith with Homer and Pip once again. Let's do this together, because no matter what happens in this world, we know that our Lord has us, and one day in eternity, it will be joy forever. It's Take all going to be fun. It's all going to be fun. I can't wait to get there. Have you. a good You'll day, be... you guys. Thanks a lot for doing the show. Thank you, Chuck. God bless you. Thanks, Thanks fellas. Peace, peace be with you, too.
And you too. Thank you. Friendly. See you.